So the Louisville Badgers are undefeated on the 2020-2021 season so far. Yes, you heard me right. We are undefeated. However, we're only 1-0 because we've only played one game. But at least let me enjoy this while it lasts. Welcome back, everybody, to episode 22 of the Louisville Badgers. And today, this is actually going to be a really fun episode, at least for me. Uh, we've got a lot of cool things that we're actually going to do, including looking over all of the rosters and playing a game against an opponent that I really think you guys are going to like. Now, I was also going to have you guys vote on the next game that we played, but check this out. November 25th, an away game against the Seattle Supersonics. This could not be more perfect, okay? We finally get to see the Sonics' new uniforms. We get to see their new court, their new arena. So they're now rocking out with Cam Reddish and Cole Anthony as their two pieces to build around for the future. And I think that that team, their future looks pretty bright. However, we're still going to try to put a beat down on them here on November the 25th. But before we do any of that, one of the things that I want to do, and this is based off a lot of you guys' recommendations, I want to go in and I want to change some things with our lineup, with our coach game plan. So first off, there's a couple of guys who are staying right where they're at. Number one, John Morant, staying right where he's at. Anthony Edwards, stay in put for now. Jaron Jackson Jr., he will never leave this starting lineup. The only time that I'll ever make a change is if I'm putting him at center, okay? But what we're going to end up doing here is we're going to swap out Joe Harris for Keldon Johnson in the starting lineup for now, okay? I want to try out Keldon Johnson. I think he's getting much, much better as a player, as just an all-around threat on this team. And I want to give him more minutes, but I don't want to give him all of Joe Harris's minutes. So we're going to keep Joe Harris at about 18 minutes a game, and we're going to put Keldon Johnson at, let's see here. And he will play 24 minutes. We'll actually give him some more minutes uh, because what we're also going to do here is we're going to move DeAndre Jordan to the bench. He's going to come off the bench as technically our sixth man, I guess, even though Monty Morris is, is kind of, you know, has the title of our sixth man. But we're going to have Sabonis playing 30 minutes a game. Again, he's an amazing scorer, an amazing rebounder, and I really do believe that he can do as much as DeAndre Jordan can. Maybe not on the defensive end, but he can do the things that we need him to do, which are rebound and score the ball inside when we need him to, and be, you know, a guy who can stretch the floor for us a little bit. When you look at this lineup, literally everybody in this lineup now can shoot the three and shoot it very, very well. So this is sort of a death lineup for us, uh, and I'm really loving it. Uh, so we're gonna give a few more minutes here to Kelvin Johnson, bump him up to about 26 a game, and I think that that's perfect. I think this is kind of what you guys were recommending that I do, putting Kelvin Johnson at the starting small forward spot. Now, I am going to try uh, a lot of Darius Baisley because I am really impressed with the way he's been playing. I'm, In fact, I'm extremely impressed with him. Uh, I want to I have him playing some more minutes. Um, you know what? Yeah, DeAndre... He's a little bit too valuable to bump his minutes down too, too much. Um, and I don't want to take any more minutes from any of our other guys. So we've got our boy Daquan Bowers, uh, one of our hashtag ad players. He's a two-way player for us, a point guard. We did need a guy who we could bring up, you know, in, in the off chance that we have an injury to one of our point guards. God forbid. Please pray that that doesn't happen. But if it does happen, we've got a guy who I think... Uh, is a high potential guy. I think he could come in. We could at least plug him in and get him some minutes as a backup point guard if we do have some injuries. Now, another thing that we're going to explore at some point in the very near future is trades. Okay, now right now we can't trade guys like Joe Harris who, you know, I'm still, I'm not going to go off of one game. He hit a really big clutch shot for us last game. Uh, but other than that, he didn't really do much else. Uh, and I just don't feel like I play all that well with him. He's kind of slow. Three-point shot is really all he has in his arsenal, uh, but that three-point shot can be deadly. The only thing is, is that we've got a lot of other guys on this team who can really shoot the three and shoot it well. So do we need Joe Harris, or could we flip him and maybe Zubats for something a lot better? So that's something we're going to explore in the near future as well. Now, the next thing I want to go through here really quickly is all of the rosters, and really the main thing that I'm, that I'm going to be focusing on here is the rookies and the hashtag ad players so that you guys know who went where. I already gave you a rundown of which free agents went to which teams and everything like that. I was not able to give you a rundown uh, exactly yet of 
who picked up which hashtag ad players and who picked up some of the smaller name free agents, uh, you know, and maybe some of the rookies that were drafted in the second round that didn't work out contracts with the team that drafted them. Uh, we do have a, a lot of hashtag ad players that that happened with where I noticed that they were drafted by one team, but they ended up being signed on another team. But anyway, let's run through this. I've got it sorted by age, so all the youngest players will be at the top of the list. So the Sixers have RJ Hampton, who they just picked up in this past draft. They have Jacob Thornton, who is one of our hashtag ad players. Uh, of course, you guys know who we have. The Bucks still have Bol Bol. They also picked up Alonzo Trier at some point very recently, but I don't think they have any of our hashtag ad players. The Bulls have Jalen Lecu, who they picked up in this last draft class, so I think that was an awesome pickup for them. They've also got Kevin Knox, Naz Reed, Keon Brooks. Uh, this team with also with having Markinen and guys like uh, uh, Zach Levine. I mean, this is going to be a dangerous team moving forward. The Cleveland Cavaliers, they've still got Sekou, they've got CJ Walker, but they've got our boy Brian Jones as well. The Celtics still have Bo Bamba, but they also picked up Max Benda and they put Alex Mark on a two-way contract. A couple of our hashtag ad players there. The Clippers picked up Brian Antoine in this last draft and they've also got Matthew Sapim, who was another hashtag ad player. The Grizzlies, who have a really good young team brewing here, they picked up Isaiah Stewart with the number one overall pick. They've also got Zach Little, and they still got Wendell Carter Jr., so a really good team here. Ty Jerome still. So uh, this is a team that could really put something together if these guys pan out. The Hawks still with Scotty Lewis and Romeo Langford, but they also picked up Bobby Sanders, who they had from the 2019 draft, and then Jack Mulligan from this past draft class. The Heat, who have our boy Aaron King. He's another hashtag ad player. They also have Jackson Hayes. Now, this is a guy who I'd really like to make a run at for a trade with the Heat because, uh, you know, we don't, we're don't we not very athletic at the five right now. And I know that, you know, not a lot of centers are athletic, and that's kind of a common thing. However, with the direction that the NBA is going, I think that having this guy for the future would be a big, big pickup for us. He's extremely athletic. He can, he can rebound, and we can even work on his rebounding, but he, you know, he's a lob threat at all times. It's just a guy who I think would be awesome on our team. Maybe we put together like a Zubots package and try to bring him over. I do have the trade negotiation harder because I want to make it as realistic as possible, but we're still going to give it a shot, and they still also have Parker Gast as well. The Hornets, who drafted really well, they've got Jaden McDaniels from this last draft. They've also got Russell Lloyd, who they picked up, another one of our hashtag ad players. Alexander Walker, who they still have, Kevin Porter Jr., so this is going to be a pretty good young team. The Utah Jazz, who I think could be very dangerous, have LaMelo Ball, Lugens Dort. They've got CJ Gonzalez, who I really think looks like that guy, Pat Gaming. He's another YouTuber. <laughs> Tell me if you guys don't think that. I think he really looks like him a lot, actually. But another one of our hashtag ad players. They've got Moses Brown, and they've got Karuch, who, of course, we traded to them. The Kings have Johnny Uzang, Jorge Vizion, and, of course, they picked up Brandon Ingram in free agency. The Knicks still rocking out with Zion, Michael Porter Jr., Dennis Smith Jr., Mitchell Robinson as their young core, and they also just picked up Alonzo Gaffney, but no hashtag ad players. The Lakers have quite a few of our hashtag ad players with Will Rogers. They just picked up Tyrese Maxey, who is not a hashtag ad player, of course. They have Horton Tucker still, and of course they still have your boy Deratio Harvey. They picked up Fishy Tuss, and I believe, yeah, they've also got Jorgos Kozanitis as well. So a lot of hashtag ad players here. He won't be in the NBA until next season. He's still playing overseas, but he is one of our ad players. The Magic still have Terrence Romeo, but they also were able to pick up Jacob Beaver, who is another good, you know, uh, really good shooting guard. The Dallas Mavericks, who I believe stole James Wiseman from the Grizzlies. Again, don't even know how that happened, but, you know, that was one of those big surprises that you see every once in a while. They've also got Nick Baker, Garrett Cerner, and they've still got our boy Tag Ames, so a few of our hashtag ad players there. Brooklyn Nets, who another team who have a few of our hashtag ad players. Marcus Jansen, Khalil Carter, Braylon Bennett. They've still got Darius Garland from the 2019 draft, so a decent team there. The Nuggets did just draft Cassius Stanley this year, but I don't think they've got any of our hashtag ad players. Wow, they've also got Taco Fall. That's really cool as well. The Pacers, who stole Trendon Watford from us. I really wanted to pick him up, but they've also got Luke Ogden, who apparently broke his foot in the first game of the season. Wow, but he'll be back and hopefully better than ever. Tomas Ribeiro is also on this team. The New Orleans Pelicans, who I think could be very dangerous in the near future. They just picked up Josh Green and Nico Mannion, but they've also got Damian Hagan. They still have Kobe White, and they also have P.J. Washington that they drafted in 2019, and still Jason Tatum. I don't know if Jason Tatum will stick around there, but we'll have to take a look, see how that works itself out. The Detroit Pistons, who picked up Markel Bennett in this past draft. He was a lottery pick. I think I said he was 6'7 in this past uh, episode before this, uh, but he's 6'6", six six apparently. But this guy, man, he is still very long. He's got an amazing wingspan. 
just an amazing scorer. He's a big, big problem for opposing point guards most of the time because a lot of times they're going to be quite a bit shorter than he is. But they've also got Tyler Harrow, and they've also still got Trey Jones, and they also picked up Michael Izomo, who is another one of our ad players. The Raptors, who drafted Anthony Red Redding, and they also still have a Corey Tyler III. But no more Kawhi Leonard, of course, so that's going to be a little bit of a problem for them. The Rockets, who drafted Ayo Desunmu in the first round, but they also picked up Brian Perkins. I can't wait to see how he pans out. The Spurs, who uh, have Jonte Porter on their team still. They picked up Sean O'Neal in the second round of this last draft. They've got Rui Hachimura from the 2019 draft. And they picked up Josh Jackson at some point. I think it was either a trade or maybe free agency or something like that. The Phoenix Suns, who have Kyle Smith and Jonathan Muller, and I thought they had somebody else. Yep, they've got Danis Petrowskis as well, so a few of our hashtag ad players there. Still got Devin, Devin Booker and DeAndre Ayton as their young core, and of course, RJ Barrett. Frank Fullwood still on the Thunder. They've also got Daniel Gafford, and they picked up DeSander Brooklyn in this last draft. The Timberwolves, who have a great, great young point guard of the future in Theo Maladon. I think he's underrated. Uh, I don't know a whole lot about him other than what, you know, the brief things that I've read and videos I've seen, but he really looks like he's going to be an awesome, awesome player in the future. They also picked up Dan Apollo, which is one of our hashtag ad players. The Portland Trailblazers, who drafted Denny in this last draft. They don't have any of our hashtag ad players, though. Golden State, who got a really, really great pickup in Precious Achua. He's a guy who I think that they can plug in either at the five or he can take over for Draymond if Draymond decides to leave at some point. They also drafted Javon Quinterly and Quentin Grimes, who I said was going to be sneaky good. I think they got him late in the first round. Yep, the 32nd pick in the first round in 2019. And look at this guy, man. Already 15 points a game last year, two and a half rebounds, two and a half assists. I mean, he wasn't assisting or rebounding a whole lot, but man, he can score. The Washington Wizards, who drafted very well this last this last draft, they got Vernon Carey Jr., Josiah James. They also picked up Isaac Bonda, Bonga. And of course, they've got your boy Jarrett Culver, who we all know could have very well won the rookie of the year this last season, but our boy Ja Morant edged him out for that one. But man, did he have an amazing, amazing season for them. 19 and a half points, five and a half rebounds, three and a half assists, a steal, a block and a half. I mean, he just had himself a hell of a rookie season. He could have very, very easily won rookie of the year over Ja Morant, but I'm glad our boy won it. And then that brings us to the last team on the list, the team that we are about to play. Of course, they drafted Cole Anthony in this last 2020 draft. They also picked up Mac McClung and Matthew Hurt. And they've got Travis Kent, one of our hashtag ad players, on a two-way deal. And as you guys all know, they've also got Cam Reddish. So this is another very, very promising young team. I think that they could be pretty tough to beat. I don't want to underestimate them at all. I do think that we are a little bit better. However, I do not want to underestimate this team one bit, especially with great young talent like Cole Anthony and Cam Reddish. They also picked up Greg Monroe and Kent Bazemore this past season, so a couple of decent veterans who can mentor the younger guys. And of course, they've got Joe Ingles, who's a dangerous three-point shooter himself. So that is the team that we will be playing coming up next. But that brings us to the end of the list. I at least wanted to take some time to go over this with you guys, to show you guys, you know, which players went where, you know, some of the smaller deals or some of the smaller pickups, and especially where your hashtag ad players went. If any of you guys didn't see your hashtag ad player on the list and you expected him to be, uh, make sure you drop a comment on this video because he may have just been a little bit further down and I may not have scrolled uh, far enough to see him. So if you think he should have been on a certain team or a specific team drafted him, just let me know and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll take a look at that. But anyway, next we're going to go ahead and simulate up to this November 25th game here against the Seattle Supersonics. And already, just a few games into the season, it looks like Zubats has broken his right leg. He's going to be out for 8 to 10 weeks, so we are going to go ahead and switch him out with, um, I was thinking Bogner, but you know what? I think to give us the best chance to win right now, we're going to put in Myers Leonard. So we'll continue on simulating, and then I will come back and we'll go over the stats once it's all finished. So here we are at November 25th at the Seattle Supersonics game that we're going to play and look at what we've done up to this point. We are 12 and 6 on the season so far. Could not be, I mean like, I'd be stupid to not be happy about that. What a great start for this team. 82% our chemistry has jumped up to and everything is looking just fantastic right now. Let's take a really quick look. First of all, the standings. Okay, so the Knicks are in first place. Brooklyn Nets are in second. We are in third place in the Eastern Conference right now. The Sixers are in fourth. 
Heat in fifth, Celtics, Magic, and Cavs round out the top eight. And then in the West, Golden State still doing work out there, man. 15 and 5 on the season. Somehow, Oklahoma City is 13 and 5 right now. The Clippers at 12 and 7. Rockets also at 12 and 7. Lakers, Pelicans, Nuggets, T Wolves, and Blazers. And really quickly, for the sake of time, I'm going to quickly go through the stats for all the games that we simulated. Uh, the Pistons' leading scorer was Blake Griffin with 22-8-4. Our leading scorer, Jaron Jackson, with 28-5-1. And, and then Anthony Edwards with 27-3-5, so an awesome game there. We beat the Rockets, man. The Rockets with Harden and Westbrook. Harden putting up 27 on us. Westbrook putting up 17. And then on our end, Sabonis, man, 31-8-3. Jaron Jackson had 30 points also. John Morant with a nice double-double, 23-11. The Sixers game, we lost. Boyan Bogdanovich was their leading scorer. Looks like they just had an all-around good game, man. They had, like, what, six guys in double figures. RJ Hampton had a good game. Anthony Edwards was our leading scorer with 26. Morant had 16 and 13. So, man, he has just become the playmaker that we always dreamed he would be. Anthony Edwards also led us in the Hawks game with 28, 4, and 4. Jaron Jackson had 26, and Morant had 20 points, 18 assists. And if I'm not mistaken... That breaks his previous record of 17. Next, we beat the Pacers by 12. Kyrie Irving had 34. Oladipo had 24. And then our leading scorer was Jaron Jackson with 32 and 9. Sabonis had 22 and 8. Joe Harris showed up in this game in only 18 minutes, put up 21 points. He was 4 of 4 from 3, 6 of 6 overall. Beautiful game for him. We lost to the T-Wolves by 10 points. Kelly Olynyk was actually their leading scorer. Jaron Jackson put up 19 here for us. John Moran, another double-double with 17, 8, and 11. Almost a triple-double there. We beat the Utah Jazz by 8 points. Karooch was actually the leading scorer, so he came out gunning, obviously, because we traded him. <laughs> Sabonis with 26 and 15, so a monstrous double-double there. A double-double also for Jaron Jackson, a little quieter. We beat the Magic in a close one by 3 points. Jaron Jackson with 25 and 9. Anthony Edwards came up big in this one. And then Trey Young for the Magic, man. 37 points. Two rebounds, two assists. Terrence Romeo was our second leading scorer, but he only had 13. Another three-point game, but this time it was the Portland Trailblazers beating us by three. Damian Lillard with 29 for them. Jaron Jackson with 27 for us. The Boston Celtics beat us in a low-scoring game. They took us by nine points. Jaron Jackson with 16. He was actually our leading scorer, so rough game there. Jalen Brown was their leading scorer with Kemba Walker right behind him. Then we played the Celtics again, but ended up beating them this time. Gordon Hayward and Kemba Walker, both with 20-plus points. John Morant with 37-9-6. and six. Man, if he would have had a triple-double here, that would have been insane. But Jaron Jackson right behind him with 27-5, 1-1-1. One, we beat Denver by 15 points. They're always a tough game, man. And look at Jokic. 20 points, 23 rebounds, 7 assists, 3 steals. He is an animal. And Anthony Edwards and Monty Morris actually led us in scoring this game. So really, really uh, positive sign for Monty Morris there. The Houston Rockets. We beat them again. Not only did we beat them, we beat them by 47 points. We scored 47 in the first quarter alone. Jaron Jackson with 23. Edwards with 22. Sabonis with 22. We had eight guys. Count them eight. Score in double figures. And Morant even almost scored. We Almost everybody on the team almost scored in double figures in this game. What a game for us, man. And on the Rockets side, Harden and Westbrook, the usual suspects, 21 and 20 respectively. Next up, we beat the Cavs by 11. Anthony Edwards and Jaron Jackson each with 20 points in this one. Jordan Clarkson and Derrick Rose, the leading scorers for the Cavs. Next up, we took a loss to the Pelicans. Actually, a big loss. 31 points they beat us by. Jaron Jackson with 25. Morant with 18. Jason Tatum put up 32 on us. Randall, Pirtle, all with 20-plus points. The Trailblazers, who beat us by three a couple weeks before, we beat them by five this time. Jaron Jackson again coming up big with 28-8. and eight. Morant with 19-5-9. And, and then the last game before our meeting with the Seattle Supersonics, the Miami Heat beat us by 31 points. Justice Winslow with 23-7-5. J.J. Redick with 22. Sarge with 18. So those guys are coming up really big for the Heat so far this year. They're actually having a pretty decent season. Jaron Jackson Jr. with 23. And then Keldon Johnson with 20. Love to see that. I really want to see him break out this year. And then that does it for the games that we simulated. So that brings us now to our meeting with the Seattle Supersonics. And I can't stress enough how cool this game is going to be, man. It's going to be really awesome, not only to see the Sonics' new uniforms, their new court. Also, we're going to get to see a, get a look at Cole Anthony, another look at Cam Reddish, man. I, I really can't wait to play this game. 
once again, I feel like we match up really well against them for the simple fact that I think that we're kind of across the board just better than this team right now. So the very last thing I want to do is be cocky, but we are going to go in here with a good deal of confidence. So looking at our starting lineup, we've got John Morant, Anthony Edwards, did mix things up a little bit, putting Keldon Johnson at starting small forward. Still got Jaron Jackson Jr. there at power forward, and then Sabonis will be our starting center. And then Seattle will run out Cole Anthony at point guard, Kent Bazemore, Cam Reddish, Ben Moore, and Marquise Chris. So while this team does have some good young pieces in place, as it stands right now, I feel like we're the better team. But this is why we play, to determine these things, so let's hop right into it. So while we're here in the pregame, I did want to take a quick look at this graphic. Take a look at our rebounds per game so far early in the season. 48.9 rebounds a game. What a big difference between this year and last year. Hopefully we can keep that up. And you've got it on 2K Sports for Wednesday night action in the NBA. With David Aldridge on our sideline and here with me, Greg Anthony and Steve Smith, this is Kevin Harlan. So here we are at tip-off in this awesome new arena. I really think it looks really great. It looks like the Seattle Sonics have a sellout crowd as well, so the fan support definitely there for them. Let's see if we can't get a, a win on the road here. I really, really would like to keep this uh, streak going here that we have. Jaron Jackson pulling up. Probably a bad shot. Probably a bad shot if we're being honest. But I wanted to see if I could get him going early here. <clears throat> and... Uh, I keep thinking that this is Norman Powell, number 24, but it's actually Kent Bazemore. He took Norman Powell's number. So uh, Seattle quickly up 2-0 on the little floater there. And uh, this is another guy, man. Our two stars, I really want our two stars, our two big stars anyway, uh, to, to get going in this game. Ja and Jaron Jackson Jr. Let's see if we can push baseline here. And Oh, my God, Ja Morant. Don't do it to him. Making Kent Bazemore look like a G-leaguer. All right, so we got the ball back here. Let's see what we can do. Oh, Kelton Johnson was open. I wanted to get that to him. All right, we missed out on that. Not a big deal. Let's keep it going here. Trey J again. Bang. That time he's going to hit, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Catch and shoot. Loving that little pick and pop play there. So here comes Cole Anthony, and this is a guy that we have definitely, definitely got to keep an eye on. He's probably the main guy that we have to worry about. When we played them last year, uh, honestly, Cam Reddish – did a lot, man. I mean, he 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 did the most on the team. See Norman Powell. I'm sorry, I keep saying that. Kent Bazemore with a nice little uh, another little runner there. But uh, yeah, Cam Reddish was the guy last season that gave us fits, and I feel like Cole Anthony, if we're not careful, is going to be that guy this season. Oh, Kelton Johnson was lost the ball there. Back to him and look. <laughs> wow, what a play. That's that's how we that's how we drew it up. All right, Ant Man bringing it up. We got some bonus up here. Look at some bonus. And one, Marquise Chris. Don't stand around looking like you don't know what just happened. You just got beat up court and picked up the foul. Okay? That's how we do it. And you see David Fisdale over there. He is the Seattle Sonics coach. All right, we're up 12 to 8 here early. Let's keep. Whoa. I don't know what just happened. Oh, my God. No, 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 no. I don't know what just happened on that whole sequence there. But Anthony Edwards, like, stood still as I was controlling him. I don't know what happened. All right, let's 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 get this little handoff here. Got room. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Flying in like Superman. Ant-Man, the superhero. That's what I'm talking about, baby. I gotta be honest with you guys, man. Something just feels different this season already, and it's not just the fact that we're, you know, that we're we're, we're 12 and six on the year. Uh, that's not the that's not the only thing that feels different. It's something about playing with this team. We just it's, something feels better. All right, tied up at 24 here. Late here in the first quarter, we got the ball. Look at look at that nice steal. I don't even know who knocked that loose. Got DeAndre Jordan trailing. Boom, baby. Look. Oh, my God. DJ, what an alley-oop. Catching it and cocking it back. All 
All right. We went on a nice little run here. I think we're on like an 8-0 run. Nice rebound by DeAndre. Push this one in transition here. Myers Leonard. Let's see if we can get Morris going here. Pull up. He's wide open, baby. Boom. Got to take those mid-rangers when they're there. I tried to back up a little bit to the three-point line, but couldn't get all the way there. But he was wide open. And the Seattle Sonics is going to take a timeout as we are on a 10-0 run here. They're going to talk things over, see if they can stop us. But uh, I have no intentions of letting them do that. All right, so they closed the gap on us a little bit here. Monroe, no way. Don't even try that. Don't even try it. Anthony Edwards. Boom, baby. Deep range dead eye, and he sure is. 38 to 34, loving it, man. I, I, I just, when he goes off those little, those little screens like that, man, he is just, he's really deadly, and I think that he's gonna just continue to grow, and be the guy that we, uh, that we drafted. Let's try to push this a little bit here. Do we have something in transition? And we do, and the end one, man. Nice bounce, nice bounce for us. Chris with the inbound. Cam Reddish, no way. Oh my God. How do you even defend that? Like, how do you defend that? Cam Reddish, man, just a—he's a—he's a good scorer. He's a, just a good player. I think he's gonna really develop. But so is this young man right here, your boy John Morant, driving on Cole Anthony. How are you gonna stop that, Cole Anthony? How are you gonna stop it? I challenge you. I challenge you to a duel. Kent Bazemore out here. Kent Bazemore is definitely. He's a scorer, man. We have got to keep an eye on him. Otherwise, this is not going to be good. And look at the traveling violation. Yes. Marquise Chris forcing the travel there. He had a mismatch with Anthony Edwards, but Anthony Edwards said, no way, buddy. He forced him into taking one too many turns. Got him off that pivot foot. Anthony Edwards. Oh, my God. Don't do it to him, Ant. Ant-Man, the superhero out here, flying through the defense. All right, we got a nice, comfortable little nine-point cushion here. No, don't leave him open for that. God, please help us. That boy is really dangerous. All right, 10-point lead. Marquise Chris, no way. Nice rebound, I don't even know who got it. Okay, Jaron Jackson got it. Anthony Edwards, take over. Let's see what you got, baby. Nice dime. Nice dime to Keldon Johnson. We had two guys jumping trying to block the shot, but no dice. Defense time. Defense time. No more Cole Anthony getting wide open. Please. Please. No more of this. All right, nice rebound. Eight-point deficit here. Look at DeAndre Jordan. Look at the old man looking like he's back in his prime again. Loving that, man. That's why we picked him up, man, because he really can score inside. But I'll tell you what, the defense and the rebounding is what we really got him for. But he can still do some things. Always a lob threat, and oh, no. Oh, no, Marquise Chris. So here we are at the halftime report. As you can see, we are shooting 54% from the field as of right now. But look at the rebounding numbers, 26 to 21. Loving every bit of this improved rebounding. All right, so we pick up the second half here. We have got a nine-point lead going into halftime, so let's see if we can have just as good a second half as we did first half. Marquise Chris hanging on the ball for a little bit here. Cole Anthony probably should have taken that shot. Baysmore, no. Oh, man, yeah, he was too open there. We've done a decent job from the second quarter on of just keeping them at arm's length and no, the reverse alley-oop flush from Cole Anthony to Marquise Chris, man. Marquise Chris, he is, uh, he's an athlete. All right, they've cut it to a four-point lead here. Let's see if we get the screen set for us. Oh, he's open. Jaron Jackson, may the force be with you, young man. What a dunk. What a flush by Trey J. All right, we're back to a 10-point lead. Really loving the way things are going in this game, man. We are just, you know, keeping distance between us and them. And look at Jaron Jackson open again on the pick and roll, man. That that might be, I don't know. You guys let me know in the comments. Do you think that Trey J and John Morant is one of the most deadly pick and roll combinations in the league right now? And in, in our world. And in real life, actually. And look at another alley-oop. 
Another alley-oop to Marquise Chris. This is just, you know, last few games we've been able to stop that alley-oop or people were failing to get it against us. And I'll tell you what, the Sonics are not failing. But, yeah, what do you guys think? Do you think John Morant and Jaron Jackson, one of the most dangerous tandems in the league? All right, they've gone on a little bit of a run here. They've cut the lead down to three. Here we go with the and Jaron Jackson. Jaron Jackson again. Look at this man. You know, when all else fails, just find Jaron Jackson. Find out where he is on the floor and get the ball to him because he's going to make it happen. Five-point game now. Cole Anthony not in the game. Good news for us. And that's why right there, Kobo losing the ball. Ant-Man diving on the floor for it, looking like the superhero that he is. Taking it back up the court here. Need the screen. Oh, he's got room. He's got room. He's got the stuff. Nice flush by Anthony Edwards. All right, seven-point game here. DeAndre's calling that he has a mismatch. I'm not really sure why he just said that. I mean, he's got the opposing team center on him. So, And look at Monty Morris. Monty Morris flashing the skills, man. All right, we're early in the fourth quarter here. We've got an eight-point lead. I'm liking the way everything is going, and I'm really liking the way that that is going. Monty Morris to Jaron Jackson. Marquise Chris, just back up a little bit. Let us get to work. All right, back to a 10-point lead, and we've got the ball. Bradley, bang, baby. Avery Bradley, wide open. I, I, I really like bringing him the game every once in a while, not just for defense, but that man, he can hit his shots. He's deadly from mid-range, and he's almost just as deadly from three. And, okay, Cole Anthony to Cam Reddish. Probably going to be seeing a lot more of that in the future in our world here. 11-point game. Jaron Jackson again. How many dunks is this man going to have in one day? What's that, like his 73rd dunk of the game? Nah, but that guy, man, I, I just, Jaron Jackson, he is, he, he, he really is fun to play with. He is just so fun on the pick and roll. The, the, the man can posterize people. He, he, he's athletic. I, I just love everything about having him down low for us at all times, and not to mention his defense. All right, don't let Cole Anthony beat us, and he does. Man, that is so hard to defend that man. All right, we got the fast break here. Jaron Jackson again. Can we get something going? No, but Monty Morris. Wait for him, Monty. Wait for him, Monty. My man. Three-point bomb. Still a 12-point game here halfway through the fourth. Almost halfway through the fourth. John ja Moran from way downtown. Bang! Way downtown. Limitless range for your boy John ja Morant. He can not only drop the dimes, but he can also drop in three-pointers from anywhere on the court. Boy, hit that one from Lexington. Now let's see if we can play some defense here. This boy Cole Anthony, man, he just... See, look. Oh, my God. Yeah, he's going to be good. He's going to be really, really good. I got to say, man, they're down by 13 right now, but it is not from a lack of effort by Cole Anthony. And look at Monty Morris doing work again. So your Jordan player of the game, Jaron Jackson Jr. And are any of you surprised? Tell me, are any, are any of you surprised? Because I'm not. I'll have to take a look at his stats in a couple minutes here, but this man just continues to just do work night in and night out. Every time we play a game, he's got 20-plus points. He's got enough rebounds. I mean, this guy does it all. All right, so we got a nice, comfortable 16-point lead here. Just over two minutes to go. We basically swapped out all of our starters except for Ja at this point because Monty Morris is very, very tired. Push it up a little bit. We don't got to do too much, and we lose the ball. Okay. <laughs> oh, my God, the double-clutch stuff by Cam. All right, less than a minute to go here. Don't got to do too much, but John ja Morant is wide open. So we'll take that. We'll take that. No problem. No problem. So this is just garbage time here. They still have a uh, few of their starters in, but honestly, I mean, Marquise Chris has fouled out. And whoa, Ben Moore. Okay. All right. I see what you're doing. Okay. And we're just going to let him... 
lay that one in. Less than 24 seconds to play. So we're just going to go ahead and dribble this one out and get a nice little 12-point road win here in Seattle at the Seattle Center. And, man, I got to tell you guys, like I said, something just feels different right now. Something felt different a little bit in that first game that we played of the season. We didn't have our chemistry all the way down yet. But I'll tell you this right now, man. Something just feels right about this team right now. I'm not saying that we're going to be a, you know, a big contender. But I think this is going to be a really good season. I really, really do. And I think that we're well on our way. End of regulation. 124 to 112. Awesome game all the way around. There were so many awesome takeaways from this game. As you guys saw. Just a uh, great, great road win. The fans here in Seattle, Washington started heading for the exit about, I don't know, three quarters of the way through the fourth quarter. So they knew uh, it was a foregone conclusion. But there you guys have it. Jaron Jackson, what a monster game. Another double-double for Ja Morant, man. He just keeps on dropping dimes and putting up points. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself here, but number 12 could have himself an MVP award some point down the line in the future. So as we take one more look here at our 124 to 112, very convincing win over the Sonics. And as you can see, Cole Anthony was their leading scorer. He had 21, four and eight. He had no turnovers, no turnovers. Shot, shot eight of 18 from the field, only one of five from three. But uh, their second leading scorer, surprisingly enough, was Ben Moore, a guy that I'm really not even that familiar with at all. And then of course on our end, John Morant and Jaron Jackson, once again, one of the funnest duos to play with in this game, in my opinion. 25 and 11, nice double-double for Ja. He also had two steals, only two turnovers. Jaron Jackson with 24, 7, and 2. And then your boy Ant-Man Edwards with 23 and 7, 8 of 15 from the field. So, man, we just shot really well. Everything just went right in this game. But look at these two stats right here. These two probably jump out at me more than anything. Sabonis so with a double-double, 10 points and 13 rebounds. And then check out DeAndre Jordan, 21 minutes, 8 points, 16 rebounds, 2 assists, 2 steals, and 3 blocks. Just a masterpiece of a game on the boards and on the defensive end for our big man in the middle, DeAndre Jordan. And last, but certainly not least, I wanted to reveal at the end of this episode the winner of the hashtag ad coach contest. Now let me just preface this by saying, number one, this was one of the most difficult things I ever had to do here on YouTube, okay? Because... You guys, there were so many submissions, and I'm not even exaggerating when I tell you that literally every one of them was awesome. Like, just flat out awesome, okay? However, I narrowed it down to a few finalists, and in the end, I went with the one that I thought was not only the most realistic, but the one that I also thought was really cool as well, and that was a submission by Mr. Frankie Duffy, for coach Daniel Havlicek, okay? So this is going to be the son of the legendary Boston Celtic, John Havlicek, okay? He will be the coach of the Brooklyn Nets. I know I said that I was gonna give you the choice of which team to coach out of a few different teams. However, I noticed that the Brooklyn Nets ended up with a generic coach. But anyway, they have a really, really good squad this year. And I thought that it'd be great to put Daniel Havlicek on the Brooklyn Nets as their new coach. In the next episode, I'll give you guys all the details of Daniel Havlicek and give you the full rundown and the story behind him. However, I did want to at least let you guys know who the winner was in this episode. But thank you guys all so much for your submissions. Again, like I said, every single one of them was awesome, and it was so hard for me to even narrow it down to multiple finalists. And then it was uh, to say it was hard in the end to narrow those finalists down to one winner is just an understatement. However... What I do want to let you guys know is that I have a little bit of a surprise. I am actually going to add another coach to the league. Okay, so keep an eye out for that. I'm going to find a custom face for him. So you still may be able to win and have your coach in our world, in our league, coaching an NBA team. So anyway, that is going to wrap up this episode. Definitely stay tuned for the next episode because I'm actually going to be revealing our new City Edition uniforms for the 2020-2021 season. I narrowed it down to two designs that I had that I really, really like. And I'm actually going to let you guys vote on which one you like the most. So keep an eye out for that as well. But we're going to reveal it in the next episode. And if we're playing a home game, I'm going to use the City Edition uniforms. However, I'm going to at least make sure that I make it a point to use them at least twice this season. So definitely keep an eye out for that. Cannot wait to see you guys back for the next one. But until then, I'll catch you guys next time.